the Bible tells us that there are various kinds of prayer. Let's read together. Ready? One, two, go. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. One more time. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. All prayer. NIV, please. NIV, I believe, says all kinds of prayer. I hope I'm right on that. All kinds of prayer. That's right. Praying in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. That means there are various kinds of prayers. And let's see the one you know and the one you don't know in this teaching. Because many believers know the one they were taught or the one they saw within maybe respectfully their denomination or whatever man of God model prayer to them. But there are various kinds of prayer. And I want to run through a list. Are you ready to learn? Number one. The first kind of prayer that the Bible teaches in no particular order. I'm just helping to guide your understanding. Remember, this is a school of prayer. So, this is a lecture. Are you ready? Number one, praying in the spirit. What we call praying in tongues. This is the first kind of prayer in no particular order that we find in scripture. There is such a kind of prayer as praying in the spirit or praying in tongues. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 15, amplified, please. The school of prayer. Someone is gaining mastery. Now you are learning that what you have been doing may be 1 over 5 or 1 over 6. No wonder the inefficiency in prayer. It's amazing the things people tell God and how they tell him in a place of prayer. So don't just tell me I am prayerful. What are you saying? Are we together? Not everyone who writes an exam passes the exam. You may be there, you may be at the venue, you may sit down, have a paper, have a question paper, and write it and come out and smile together with those who will get A. But when the result is out, there's A, B, C, E or D, depending on what parameter you are using, and F. There is even absent. And yet the person came for the exam. Maybe he forgot his exam card or he forgot something. He will still be put absent there. Or he didn't finish paying school fees. Absent. Are we together? Hmm. Praying in the spirit. 1 Corinthians 14, 15. Then, what am I to do? He says, I will pray with my spirit. What does that mean? By the Holy Spirit that is within me, but I will pray also intelligently with my mind and understanding. He says, I will sing with my spirit by the spirit that is within me. And I will sing intelligently with my mind and my understanding. So you can pray in or with the spirit and you can pray with your understanding. Just back down 1 Corinthians chapter 14, now verse 2. Let's look at verse 2. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2. It says, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speak it not unto men he's talking about the prayer language of tongues but unto god for no man understandeth or catches his meaning because in the holy spirit he utters secret truths and hidden things not obvious to the understanding is someone learning now go to verse 4 same scripture we'll read the a part he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself builds up himself this is the first prayer model that is given to us in no particular order that you pray in tongues now listen please the subject of praying in the spirit or praying in tongues has been an age-long debate but let me tell you this i'm not here to create any further arguments i can tell you based on the authority of scripture and in the experience of my own life and those who have modeled Christ in a way that is enviable, you will never have a truly rich spiritual life if you do not open up yourself to receive as an added advantage to the life of God that you have received this gift of the prayer language. It has nothing to do with being a Pentecostal or being a charismatic, unfortunately. I know the reason why uh, other faith you know denominations that are a lot more modest is because of the way tongues is administered is administered with a lot of foolishness and carelessness and it makes it so unattractive there's a way people do it that you say no i'm not i'm not into this this madness 
but there is a decent way of engaging the prayer language such that you get maximum utility from that gift by this i'm calling on anyone here who is yet to be filled with the holy spirit with evidence of fluent tongues fluent tongues like any other language are we together fluent tongues open up your spirit to receive tonight and then you can always be open to receive from our prayer department it was designed with that as one of the assignments a platform that gives you opportunity to be filled with the holy spirit something happens to you when you engage in the spirit consistently consistently again my reservation goes to our dear pentecostals and charismatics because of the misuse of this gift it's been so battered that it's brought reproach to the name of the lord how could god give such a gift that looks like it makes people mad no sir anything that comes from god is good and it is perfect if it was misused it came as a result of ignorance who is learning pray in the spirit pray in the spirit a weak man becomes strong when you pray in the spirit pray in the spirit an undiscerning person becomes a person of such profound discernment praying in the spirit helps you to access illumination by the spirit there are so many things you miss when you do not submit yourself to the prayer language in tongues